morning. If you're just joining us now by the internet, we welcome you this morning. We want you to worship with us this morning. Just begin to lift your hands and welcome in the presence of the Holy Spirit into your home. Wherever you are, He can reach through space and time to where you are to meet your need this morning. We invite you to worship with us this day. Hallelujah. Come on, beam of light. Let's begin to lift our hands this morning and welcome in the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, sing. Holy Spirit, rain down. Oh, rain down. Oh, comfort her and friend. Lord, how we need your touch again. Oh, Holy Spirit, rain down, oh, rain down, and let your fire fall, and let your voice be heard, and come and change our hearts, Lord, as we stand on your word, oh, Holy Spirit,
Go ahead and lift your hands. Go ahead and worship Him. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in His presence. It's in His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in His presence your weakness dies. In His presence, hallelujah, He takes that old hardness and He makes it soft. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and lift your hand and say, Lord, work on me. Work on me, Lord. Be real to me. Hallelujah. 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 I want to thank all of those watching by the internet. We love you today. Thank you for looking in. We want to encourage you to worship God with us. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. And all of those are sitting in the sanctuary, standing in the sanctuary with me today. So glad to see all of you. Look around you and smile at somebody and tell them we're glad to see you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know we've got some folks that are out of town for the holiday. Hallelujah. But we've got other folks that are back from their holidays, and we're so glad to see them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here. How many are you glad to be here? Hallelujah. Well, I've got a treat for you this morning. God was dealing with me on Thursday. Hallelujah. And I said, well, that would be nice. I didn't realize how much God was dealing with me. How many knows God's sometimes talking to you and you think you don't know quite it's Him yet? How many's, how many's found that out yet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, you, you've, you've had it before because you've done this. I knew I shouldn't have bought that. Hallelujah. That was God saying, uh-uh. And you said, oh, yeah, I think we'll do it anyhow. Hallelujah. Well, I've got a young lady just looking up here, just praising God at me. Hallelujah. And she don't even know I'm talking about her just yet unless the Holy Ghost is going, He's talking about you. Hallelujah. But we have her sing on Wednesday night a lot. Hallelujah. And Thursday, I was walking and the Lord the Lord was just dealing with me about her singing on Sunday morning. I said, well, that would be awesome. I don't know how I'd fit that. Hallelujah. You know who you are. Just come on and get your key. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so then, then yesterday, hallelujah, as I was praying yesterday morning, hallelujah, it, it came back again. Hallelujah. So I said, well, I don't know how that'll work. And then just a few moments ago as I was standing over there, in fact, this morning again, and then just a few moments ago, I said, hallelujah, well, she's singing today. She may not know it. You may be used to me singing a song right here. Hallelujah. But it's Father's Day. I think I can take a day off, take a song off. Hallelujah. Look around at the Father around here and say, Happy Father's Day to them. Hallelujah. Now just, just open your heart and get ready. I'm going to ask this young lady to sing, and God always uses her. Hallelujah. And I want you to worship God, and let's, let's worship together. Hallelujah.
celebration of us it's a celebration of God so many get caught up in going to church to dress up to see somebody else but it's not about us it's about him And if you go to church and you don't touch him, I almost want to say it's a wasted trip. And in just a few moments, the service is going to change and we're going to Sunday school and we're going into the Word of God. And if you haven't touched him yet, You've got just another instant to reach out and touch you. Now you say, Brother Frank, why do, you, why do you do what you do? It's because I want you to get used to touching Him. I want you to learn how to worship Him. You know, some people don't know how to even worship Him. But I want you to get used to it and let it be familiar so it doesn't have to be at the church you worship him you may be like me you may be worshiping him in your car you may worship him on the job wherever you may be you may stop and say lord i just give you glory praise you thank you hallelujah i've made a habit of hitting my toe instead of saying uh bad i i i say hallelujah help me lord I want you to be able to reach out and touch him no matter where you may be. And that is a learnable skill.
and that's what I want you to do. Be in the middle of any kind of warfare, any kind of trouble, and be able to say, Lord, I love you. I worship you. Now sing this one chorus with me, just a few moments. See if I could just touch the hem of his garment.
Hallelujah. Just thank him for his presence. Celebrate his presence. Hallelujah. Celebrate his presence. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands right now and just say, Lord, draw me closer than I've ever been. Draw me closer than I've ever been. Stir me for you, Lord. Stir me for you, Lord. I know I be here and my sins all forgiven if I could just touch him I know I If I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just Just reach out right now and say, Lord, meet my need. If I could just touch. Hallelujah. Maybe you're standing in the gap for somebody else. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a neighbor. Hallelujah. Lord, move for them now. Lord, move for that man of God. Move for that man of God in the name of Jesus. Send supernatural strength for that man, Lord. Send a baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord.
flow of the Spirit and minister to Him. Sins all forgiven. Hallelujah. If I could just touch him, I know I. Touch him, I know I behold. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look over somebody around you, beside you. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God today. Hallelujah. And tell them you're glad to be here. Hallelujah. Tell them you're glad to be here. Not you're, not you're glad to see them, but I'm glad to be here. How many is glad to be here? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glad to have our visitors here with us today. Hallelujah. And uh, we just don't really count your visitors. We just count your friends we hadn't met yet. Hallelujah. Can I tell you real quickly before we go to the Sunday school, can I tell you that you haven't met some of your best friends yet? I know some of you think, well, I might be a little bit older, Brother Frank. Maybe I have. I'm here to tell you, if you will allow God to lead you and guide you. And you don't have to pray this prayer, but this is a prayer the Lord gave me about nine months, a year ago, something like that. Maybe 15 months by this time. Hallelujah. If you don't write the dates down on them, you, you really kind of lose them. Hallelujah. Anyhow. I was, I, was, I was praying and worshiping the Lord, and he spoke to me, make big to me the things you want me to see. And I'm here to tell you that God keeps bringing people into my life. I'm not looking for them. I'm not, you know, out turning stones over trying to find them. But God brings them into my life. And I'm telling you, I, I, I'm speaking prophetic to you. You haven't met some of your best friends yet. Hallelujah. And, and the enemy may be battling you. You may be struggling with some things. But look forward. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews to put our eyes on Jesus. Look forward and watch God move for you. Hallelujah. He'll heal, he'll heal the hurts of your past. Hallelujah. And he'll move you forward and life will be better Hallelujah, than it's ever been. Hallelujah. I, I'm having a little bit of struggle in my, in my uh, body today. I can't hear too good. I hear myself really well. Hallelujah. My breath seems to be louder than any of y'all. Hallelujah. I'm getting a little sound, getting a little feedback, a little high scan feedback, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. From the, from the inside here, but... I'm so glad to see you, so glad to be here, glad to have all of our visitors, hallelujah. My, my little sister back there, um, honey, you know I know your name, but, but what's your name again, baby? Megan, hallelujah, that was eyes, reading lips, hallelujah. Anyhow, uh, you were here last Sunday night and, uh, and with, with Charles, and y'all left, and I never addressed you, and I felt bad about that all week. But I'm glad to see you today. Hallelujah. How many is glad to see these fathers on this beautiful Father's Day? Give these dads a good hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I don't know if y'all figured it out yet or not, but I like to give stuff away. And I uh, gave portraits away on Mother's Day. And... Uh, and we, we put a lot of effort into that. 
you should have seen me trying to find frames. And I was going from store to store. I, they tell me my, my cell phone has maps on it. I, I, I learned to make phone calls on a cell phone, and then they put a camera on it. Hallelujah. That was pretty handy, but that's where I stopped. Oh, contacts. Oh, did I ever need a, a contact book when they gave me a cell phone? I needed a contact book bad. Hallelujah. Any, anyhow, so all I've ever used in my cell phone was make phone calls, learn to take a picture. Hallelujah. And, uh, and boy, I've gotten scary because now if I see something, I take a picture of it. Then I forget I have a picture of it. Anyhow, anyhow, so y'all should have seen me trying to get picture frames in, for Mother's Day. My, I had my cell phone. They were on the phone talking to me that I could make it tell me where all these stores were. And I would get to stores and buy all their frames, and they had no frames left uh, like we wanted. And I would have the cashier, especially if they're young kids. How many know what I'm talking about? Middle-aged people. You don't have to be old. Hallelujah. So if they have a young cashier, I'd say, would you please tell me what I'm doing wrong? Help me here. And I'd have Gina on the, on the speakerphone trying to help me. Oh, it was a mess. But anyhow, we got those picture frames, and I hope you enjoyed your Mother's Day picture. And I was praying. Uh, I've given books away for a few years for Father's Day. And I was praying. And I'd been praying since way before Easter. Lord, what am I supposed to do for Father's Day? What am I supposed to do for Father's Day? And we have decided, I believe this is what God wants me to do, and uh, I sure like it. Hallelujah. If I missed, I missed on something I liked. Hallelujah. But today we have a Father's Day gift that is my pleasures, my things that I really like. Now you'll notice that I've obviously been on a diet because there's not any diet food in the gift today for fathers. And Sister Alma, we're going to need you to get lost for a few moments while Brother Mark gets his Father's Day gift from me. Sister Alma doesn't like him to eat much sweets. Hallelujah. But that's all right. If, if we can get her attention today, hallelujah, maybe the next door neighbors can call her out in the yard and Brother Mark can hide his goodie bag. Hallelujah. I have a gift of Father's gift, Father's Day gift for the fathers in the church today. And it's all kind of stuff I like. Hallelujah. So if you, if you get the bag and you don't like it, you know this is not what Brother Frank. Hallelujah. I don't want to eat with Brother Frank if, if that's what I have to eat. Hallelujah. But I believe you're going to enjoy it today. Thank goodness for Sister Gina because I didn't do a, I didn't do, oh, I did. I, I did I did buy I went to a store and, and bought the store out we you know when we buy for y'all we we clean stores out hallelujah we don't have any more of that note to the manager we need to order some more of that hallelujah well we we done that again this this uh this weekend we've been unstocking stores buying gifts for the fathers but aren't you glad to see these fathers today hallelujah give them another good hand come on brother Keith Hallelujah. Let's go to our Sunday school today. We're going to read out of the book of Psalms. Psalms 128. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Thy wife shall be a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants around about thy table. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Amen. Glory to God. Me, I be Ellie. Yes, that's the book for me. I'll stand alone on the word of
Hallelujah. No place I would rather be. Hallelujah. I like that song. I guess y'all figured that out by now, haven't you? Hallelujah. All right. If you would, would you bow your head with me with us and let us pray, please, over the Sunday school offering? Would you pray, sir? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is the Sunday school offering, but he has some tie envelopes if you need one of those for later. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles with you today, especially those watching by the Internet, I'd like for you to uh, turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was, as I was praying this morning about today's message and what God wanted me to, to speak to you about and preach to you about, hallelujah, God spoke to me about him wanting us to be like him. And on this beautiful Father's Day, as we celebrate our earthly fathers, God's whole heart for us is for us to be like him. Now, there's so much in the scripture, hallelujah, on this that you, it, it doesn't say it very plainly, but I believe and I hope that after I'm finished preaching and teaching today, that you'll understand, you'll receive the understanding that God is wanting us to be like him. And we are children, just as we have children. We recognize our children don't see things and we must show them and teach them and help them. And that is just the model that we are with God. And that's, that's what I want for you uh, to understand today. That's what the Lord was dealing with me about in the, in the prayer room this morning was that God wants us to be like him. And uh, I'm going to preach on a few of those things, so many of them that uh, you can't preach on all of them. These are just a few. And I believe that if you'll let the Lord revelate his word to you, you'll see it in a lot more places as you read your Bible. Won't even be looking for it. For it. You'll just, it'll just show up. Hallelujah. If you would, would you bow your head with me and let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you to hide me behind the cross today. Bring all your wonderful scriptures, not only to my remembrance, but our remembrance. Sweet Holy Ghost, I ask you to anoint me and anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Sweet Holy Ghost, I ask you to speak in stereo while I speak. Speak words and scriptures confirming what I'm preaching and minister to every life and every need of every hearer of your word today. Lord, I ask for the presence of the Holy Ghost to anoint our minds that we can have understanding of the revelation of the word of God, to anoint our hearts. Lord, make us good ground that we can receive the word, it be planted and rooted and established in our lives. And Lord, I ask you to give us wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom to understand and to apply your word and to realize, Lord, that your word is just uh, 
of instruction manual to how you are, how you feel about things, where you stand on circumstance and situations. And Lord, it gives us an understanding how to be like you. Now, Lord, don't only anoint me, but anoint every hearer of the word today, whether they're in their sanctuary or listening by the internet or by some recording. Lord, you can reach, reach through space and time and minister to every need, and I ask you to do that. In Jesus' precious name, we ask and pray, and let everyone say amen. God bless you today. Hope it's not too cold. Is it too cold in here? I see some fanners over here. If somebody's cold, the fanners need to go where the cold spot's at. Hallelujah to make them happy. I'm, I just don't, the air kind of gets me in. Anyhow, we'll go forward. Hallelujah. And I want to ask you today, while you listen to me, help me. Uh, help you work a little bit more. I don't ask you to talk to me, but I want you to work a little bit more and realize I'm just kind of clogged up. And, and I'm, I'm tripping over some syllables. So just, just understand me and give me a little leadway today. Almost said leadway, leadway today. Hallelujah. Anyhow, Matthew, the fifth chapter. I'd like to read our text first. If you would, stand with me, please. Hallelujah. I'd like to read our text first, Matthew 5 and 45. And then we're going to drop back to the 43rd verse and read. Look with me at Matthew 5 and 45, that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Get a picture of that? That ye may be the children of your father. Hallelujah. Look with me back to verse 43, Matthew 5 and 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wow, isn't that something? That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You may be seated. I want to preach to you just a few moments today, teach to you a few moments a day, that God is wanting us to become more like him. And as we come through this Father's Day, we need to realize that our Heavenly Father has created us. And God is very concerned about us following after him. But as we live life and as we uh, go through some hard things, we find people and Certain uh, organizations try to teach us, well, if they done bad, you do bad back to them. And if they done you wrong, you do them wrong back to them. But that's not what your heavenly father wants you to do. And as I read the scripture here today, he said, love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. That's what you heard. That's just kind of normal. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Now, I want you to realize this. He's not letting them go with it. He's saying, bless them. Can you realize, we, we, you and I would say they, they're lucky because I didn't do them anything back, right? Isn't that how we feel? Well, they're lucky because I didn't get them. I, it, I, if I'd have been in a bad mood or they'd have got the old me or whatever, I would have given it to them. That's not what God said. Bless them back. What? Hallelujah. Yes, God wants you to bless them. 
I want you to love them. Those that despitefully use you, pray for them. I'm going to tell you what, now that, that, that is big in my book. You don't know how many people call me and ask me for prayer. When people ask me to pray, that is a weight to me. I look, now if I prayed for two people a, a week, you know, I probably could, wouldn't be as big. But when you pray for people all the time, in my position, it's become a weight to me. And when he says for me, those that despitefully use you, pray for them. He's not just asking you to let them buy. He's asking you to bless them, take effort, work. Ask me to move for them. Hallelujah. Now, when we, when we have the word of God here and we read this, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Now, how many has come to the understanding? For he maketh his son to rise on the evil. Now, that's, that's not S-O-N, that's S-U-N. It's the center of our galaxy, or it's the center of our solar system, pardon me. Not, not the center of just your life, but the center of our solar system. That's his son. Have you ever seen, and I've mentioned this, have you ever seen somebody curse God? Yet God allows them to breathe on. If they curse us, we never forget it, do we? There's a little something in our minds that we, we remember that for the rest of our lives. And heaven help us if they ever get in a bind and we hold it all for them. Right? But the Bible says that God causes his son to rise upon the just and the unjust. Isn't it something people that we don't think are very good, God continues to breathe life into them and help them. Now that's the kind of attitude that God wants us to have. In fact, as we go to the scripture in just a few moments, in the book of uh, Matthew again, he's going to say, if we don't forgive, that cuts off him from forgiving. There's one of those words I tripped over. Him from forgiving. You say that three times clogged up. Hallelujah. Now, before I get to forgiveness, let's look at the word of God in the book of John. Look over with me to John, the 13th chapter and the 34th verse. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. You got it? As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So I want to read 34 continuous now. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Now imagine this, that God is wanting us to love one another, and this is the identity that, they, that we will have. This is the identity that those that don't know us, haven't ever met us, have never had any interaction with us, when they see us from a distance, they'll know we're God's children and his disciples because of what? We know how to get back at one another. That's sarcasm if you're listening by the internet, by the way. You see, a lot of Christians, you can't tell them from somebody else. We're talking about unbelievers. You can't tell them from uh, people who haven't read the word of God, doesn't know anything about God. But the Bible tells us if we are to be what God wants us to be, the identity will be that we love one another. Look with me now, um, First John, I know I've got some uh, young people here that, that they're not very Bible familiar, but this is in the epistle of John, not the gospel. In the epistle of John, back by the book of Revelations, back in the back, First John, the fourth chapter. The 
the seventh verse. It says, 1 John 4 and 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. Here's a very important four words. For God is love. So, here is the very essence of who God is. God is love. So you and I and humanity can be wicked, we can reject him, we can curse him, we can shake our fist at the sky trying to get to him, and yet God responds with love. Wonder why? Last four words. For God is love. Now listen here. You and I have decided that we love people, right? We love our mamas, we love our daddies, we love those that are special to us, right? But God has decided that he loves everyone and he'll, he would say about himself, I will describe myself this way, God is love. So when God so loved the world in John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, it wasn't foreign. It wasn't strange. If you're in the heavens and you see an attribute or an action of God and anything God does, you recognize that it's going to have love. So when Jesus came for a world who had rejected him beginning at Adam and Eve, and when Jesus had come fulfilling the plan of God, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, when the fullness of time had come. So as we look throughout the Old Testament and the 4,000 years or 6,000 years, ever which way you want to look at it, when we look at it through it, we see that this is a sum of what God would do. So when the fullness of time had come, do you think when Jesus had finally got here that it was going to be a condemnation message? All of heaven knew. When Jesus got here, they were going to see the love of God expressed somehow. And the Holy Ghost moved upon Paul, and Paul wrote it down like this. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son made of a woman. Here, this baby Jesus that we celebrate at Christmas came and fulfilled the law. The law says... If they take your eye, you give your eye. They take your eye, you, you know the law. When Jesus came, they said, how many times are we to forgive? Oh, Peter's going maybe seven times and I've got him. And Jesus says to Peter, 70 times seven in a day and I don't believe anybody even that little kid that keeps asking why 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 I don't believe anybody has burned that 70 times 7 rule why because God's fullness of love doesn't have anything to do with his great power. See, you and I say, Padna, you won't do me that again or I'll black your eye, right? But if we can't blacken somebody's eye, then we don't feel too threatened, do we? Because we have love and forgiveness for things that overpower us, don't we? You wouldn't take that ticket from that police officer if he didn't have a badge and all of law enforcement backing him up. I've seen some people didn't have enough sense to recognize he had a badge and a gun strapped to his side and all he's got to do is shoot you and you're wrong. My dad and mom raised me a little bit more sense than that. He's got a gun, a badge. I, he didn't have to have a gun for me to respect him. My mom and dad taught me to respect him anyhow. But that gun sure helps me out, doesn't it? You know, even when you're wrong, I wasn't speeding. Yes, you were. You go, yes, sir. You know what I told my son? 
Son, if the policeman ever pulls you over, you say, yes, sir, no, sir. And whatever he says, you do. You don't explain anything. You don't tell. You just say, yes, sir. Daddy, what if I wasn't speeding? You say, yes, sir. You take the ticket and get back in the car. A lot of times we listen because of authority. God has all the authority in the world. But seldom have we ever seen God use it, have we? Hurricanes exist. Storms exist. God could do any kind of catastrophe he wanted to, but he doesn't. But let me tell you something. If you say, what about hurricanes and all these catastrophes? That's an un. Uh, perfect world when Adam sinned in the garden and our in our world became uh, of sin nature the world has been unperfect but when we get to heaven God God's been telling us about it the whole time appreciate uh, I want you to appreciate heaven it's going to be perfect when you get there there won't be no hurricanes in heaven won't be no tears in heaven now see now that's the will and the plan of God but we live in an unperfect society in an unperfect world because sin came in but guess what God didn't leave us here and say too bad on y'all I'm going to live in heaven without y'all no no he said I'm going to make a way to bring you but now here's the deal I want you to be like me God is love. Look with me now. Book of Matthew. I started you in Matthew. Go back to the book of Matthew. The sixth chapter. Look with me down here. The sixth chapter, the ninth verse. After this matter, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. How many have realized? How many have recognized a lot of times we don't really want God's will, do we? Have you ever seen those little children of ours? We tell them, this is what you're going to do, and they, they don't like it. You think we're trying to be mean to our children? No, we're trying to show them a better way that they don't recognize. That's a hint. That's where we are. God has some ways he wants us to walk in, not to be punishment to us, but some better ways that we don't recognize yet. Look here with me. Give us this day our daily bread. How many of us want it all? Lord, <laughs> I've had a few people tell me, wouldn't you want to win the lottery? Yes, we all want it all. Don't we? Beside you, Ali. Help me out here. Okay, well, good. I'd give it to somebody else. But you can't bring it with you when you die. That's, that's, that's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're right. And, and I really don't want it all either, but I'm preaching. I'm trying to show them a point. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nevertheless, we have a tendency to desire more. That's, that's a way to say it. We have a tendency to want more than our share. But the will of the Father is for us to want enough for today. Give us our daily bread and then it gets harder. Look here at the next scripture. Because it's very powerful. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. How many know we have a different attitude somebody we owe than somebody owes us? I don't think I need to preach there anymore. That's pretty, that's pretty straight. Here, look at my next one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
I want you to understand something. In the Lord's Prayer, we find the model of Jesus showing and teaching not only to the disciples, but all believers, be like God. You need to fashion yourself and be like God. Love those, because God is love. Forgive those, because God forgives. I tell you, one of the greatest things that Jesus ever said was, as we forgive, God forgives. He uses the young man that has made a few mistakes, and he's got himself 17 cents, I believe it is, short. And he goes and he throws his fellow servants into prison when his master had forgiven a many multiplied times more. And Jesus taught the disciples with that parable saying, as we forgive, we open the door for forgiveness in our life. Do you realize that God has forgiven you so much that you don't have one One, uh, what, what is the adjective I want to use there? You don't have one reason to hold aught in your heart against someone else. But isn't that, isn't that that other one? Jesus, when he was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the group that day, he said, your father is the devil. He's alive from the beginning. Was he saying that you were created by the devil? No. What he was saying was, you have taken the attributes of the other. See, today God has sent me here to preach to you is that you do not need to take the attributes of the enemy. You're supposed to take the attributes of God. I run into people all the time, they say, I'm not good enough. I run into people all the time, they say, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that uh, I could ever be a Christian. And they give me all kind of reasons why they can't do something for God. They can't go to church. Can I tell you, I don't mind where you start. But you need to become what Paul said in the book of Colossians, like Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, there, there that fashion is again. The very essence of God is for you to be like him. That's his desire. I want you to be what I have showed you. Here's Here's, here's a, a great happening in the book of Luke. The ninth chapter, the 54th verse. The Bible says that the Samaritans rejected Jesus. And after they rejected Jesus, in the ninth chapter, 54th verse of Luke, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? Now, the Samaritans had just rejected Christ. The Bible said Jesus went around doing good. And when we look at the word gospel, it really is saying, and this is the way we should understand the gospel, it's really saying good tidings. So the Bible tells us that the goodness of God brought us Jesus and Jesus is fulfilling the plan of God and they reject it. 
How many has decided I can love them, I can forgive them, but if they continue on rejecting, doesn't that give me a right, Brother Frank? Sounds logical, doesn't it? But logic doesn't line up with what God is. Because you and I say, how can a, how can a, he, he be eternal past, be an eternal future, and be in the here and now? That's not very logical. In fact, my little crazy, pardon me, my limited brain struggles with an unlimited God. So, they've done me wrong. I've forgiven them once, twice, 70 times in a day. So, what should I do? Here's what James and John says. Call fire down. Or you don't have to do it, Jesus. You want us to do it. I mean, they had seen Peter walk water. They were ready to call fire down from heaven. You got the water trick. We want to do fire. And what's Jesus do? Now, I'm thinking, if I'm going to help you out, I want you at least to like me. Right? But the Bible said Jesus rebuked them. Wow. Now they're in trouble. We're just trying to help Jesus out. And Jesus rebukes them. Look here, 54. Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they just went on to another village. Isn't that something? You and I can get religious. We can even walk with Jesus. And we not really be what he wants us to be. We can get somebody to pat us on the back, say you're doing good and all these things, but we're not really what God wants us to be. One of my most beautiful, one of my most beautiful scriptures in all the Bible. This is one I would mark down. In the book of Job, that's just before the book of Psalms. Turn with me. And I would like for you to get a highlighter and mark it in your Bible. It's Job, the 22nd chapter, and the 21st verse. For many years, I didn't mark my Bible now I've, 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 I started doing that about 10 years ago, and I just, it's, it's been so powerful to me. I would, I have marked this one, it jumps off the page. Anytime my, I'm, I'm near this page, this one jumps off. Of the two pages, well, I have more than one marked on these two pages, but this is one of them. And that'll help you too when scriptures mean something to you and you put a little mark by them. Don't mark them so much you can't read them anymore, but just put a little mark by them that, hey, this was good to me. And someday when you've forgotten about it, you'll read, you'll go by there and go, and it'll minister to you again. But now here's one of the most beautiful scriptures to me in the Bible. It says in Job 22, 21, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Job 22 and 21. Now you see, the reason why this scripture is in here today is because this morning when the Holy Ghost spoke to me, my message is God wants you to be like him. Love, forgive. But you cannot be like him if you don't know what he's like. So the very important word, first word of this scripture is acquaint. When? Acquaint now thyself with him. 
You know, I meet a lot of people who pass by me. Now, let's, let's talk about people who pass by me. Come here, Brother Chase. I may be down at the hospital. Somebody walks by, sees me coming down the, 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 the hospital aisle and uh, hallway. They'll say, hey, Brother Frank, how you doing? Doing good. How are you? Good to see you. Good. Well, how thank you. you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got a mute button on there. Okay. <laughs> He's just trying to help me. Well, here's somebody else to become acquainted with. But we, we walk by them. We think we just met them, right? But that scripture says, acquaint. Do you realize how many Christians just meet the master? In fact, we think they're successful. We feel successful because we went to church. But the scripture says, acquaint now thyself with him. God wants you not just to meet him like I just met him in the aisle, but God wants you to, come over here with me. Sit down. All right, I'll sit over here. That's all right. <laughs> YouTube. Chase Daniels. There he is, sitting down. Meeting God and acquainting yourself with Him is different. Sometimes I'm, I met this one fellow one time, kept talking to him. Every time I see him, he'd want to talk. Y'all never met anybody like that, have you? Hey, pal, how you doing? God bless you, you know, blah, blah, blah. I never forget, it was over here at the, uh, the store before it burnt down years ago. Hi, hey, pal, I was at the gas station there. He met me again. Hey, pal, kept talking to me. Every time I seen him, he talked to me. Three days later, I was on the job. I was talking to one of my people I was, that had hired me. And I called him pal. How you doing, pal? <laughs> that wasn't something I said. That was what that fellow kept talking to me said. Every time I seen him, he called me pal. How, pal? I went, huh. It done got me. In places in life, and I don't know if Sister Gina ever picked it up, she may just, you know, she puts up with a lot of things, never mentions it. But I kept hearing myself call pal. Have you ever heard me call pal? Hey, pal. No, I've never addressed you pal, maybe. But <laughs> there's that mute button. Be quiet. God knows if you will take time with him, he'll make you like him. In other words, did you hear me say it this morning? He gave me that in the prayer room probably three, five years ago. While I was down praying, he says, my presence will make you soft. I was telling Sister Gina the other day, I said, you have to protect me. I said, a person that gives is not a good negotiator. A person that has a heart to give cannot negotiate. And because of my time in prayer, I'm not real good at being hard. That's because I have acquainted with myself with him by sitting in his presence not running from his presence to go do something else but staying in his presence until he's finished with me and when that happens you say I don't know how I could just pray for somebody that despitefully uses me that's because you haven't spent enough time with him you've run in the church service and run back out I meet a lot of people who come to church 
and they check out. Their body is still here, but they're gone. You don't realize how many times while I'm preaching, I look at people and they're gone. Some of you right now going, I hope he wasn't thinking about me. <laughs> but if you'll acquaint yourself with him, be at peace with becoming acquainted with him. You say, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I would like to be acquainted with God. Let me tell you something. Even if you feel like you wouldn't like it, you could say, Lord, change me. Change me, Lord. I've, I've asked him to, ch to take the desire of sin out of my life. There, there, there's a nugget for somebody. That's some preaching. You can ask God to take the desire for sin, whatever the temptation has been in your life, you can ask him to take it out. God will. We have not because we. But you see, you don't get to know that if you haven't acquainted yourself with him. But by just sitting down with him, talking to him, reading his word, thank you very much. Hitting your mute button while you're in his presence. That's a good one. Because we really like to tell him what we want, don't we? When he says, I'd like for you to be quiet and let me give you what I want you to have. As I was praying this morning, and my message is over, let me just wrap it up. These children have come in. As I was praying this morning, the Lord was dealing with me how we want things that we haven't got. How many has ever decided, you know, I wanted that and haven't gotten it? The devil says, that makes God be mean to you if you haven't gotten it. I had somebody tell me one time, I respect them a lot. They say, God not only says yes, he says no sometimes. How many has ever had God tell you no? I really want that green teal car, Lord. Well, he didn't get it. <laughs> Turns out that green teal car was going to be a trouble from the day we got it. God sometimes says no. While I was praying this morning, I said, Lord, what do I tell people when they say God has told me no? That was the expression. What do I tell them? I want to tell them to be like you, but what, what, how do I answer that question? I want you to know today that God loves you so very much. But the most important thing for you to do is to ask God to come be formed in you. And when you begin to realize that your children sometimes aren't ready for something. My young boy said to me, Daddy, when I get older, can I have your car? I said, son, that car is too much car for you now. How many realize there may be something good for you, but if it's not the right time, it can be bad for you. I've seen a lot of people who were meant to be married. It just wasn't time yet. You see, that's what becoming acquainted with God. He gives you an understanding. If, if I don't understand it, you can give me grace to live without it. In my quoting scripture today out of the book of Colossians, the first chapter, I believe it's the twenty seventh verse it says Christ in you the hope of glory he forgave while he was on the cross in agonizing pain said father forgive them God wants you to glorify him and be 
like him. Lord, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for your precious people. Lord, I ask you to help us to be like you. Lord, take out this old, hard, fleshly way to get back, to fight, to hold a grudge. Lord, take that out of us and help us to be acquainted with you and take and give us love, forgiveness, long-suffering, the fruit of the Spirit. I thank you. I give you glory and praise and honor in the precious name of Jesus. Let everybody say amen. amen. Let's read our verse together out of the book of Colossians. Oh. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. As, as we read this, I want you to notice he says riches. It's a mystery to most, but you can see a little bit of the riches. What is the riches, Brother Frank? Christ in you. You to be like God. I mean, Y'all don't want me to act like the devil, do you? Want me to act like God. I'm going to tell you what, as pastor, I want y'all to act like God. Y'all make pastoring a lot easier when you act like God. My brother told me one day, he said, you probably pray 80% for 20% of the people. I said, I think that's right. Most of my prayer grows for that group that don't act like Christ. Oh, Lord, help them. I want to be like Christ, don't you? God bless you. Be like your father today. Hallelujah. God bless you.
what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Come on, Zoe. Whoa. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Thirteen and one. Thirteen and one. Though I speak. Though I speak. Tongues. With tongues. Of men and of angels. Of men and of angels. I have not charity. Heard not charity. I am become. I am become. Sounding brass. <laughs> sounding brass. Sounding brass. Tinkling. Simple. Good job. Amen. Good job. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. 13 and 1. Though I speak. With the tongues. With the men and angels. And have not charity. I'm become. It's a sounding brass. For a tickling symbol. Good job. First Corinthians thirteen and one. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass and as twinkling symbols. Good job. First Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I become as sounding brands and twinkling cymbals. Tingling cymbals. Tink, 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 tink. First Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass, tinkling cymbals. First Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with tongues of man and with angels, I am become and I have not charity, I am becoming as a sounding brass and have to go in symbol. Good job. First Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not nothing and have not charity, I am become as a sounding, I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yes, good job. First Corinthians 13 and 1, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. First Corinthians 13 and 1, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Yes. First Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, if I have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Good job. Are you doing it? You can try it? No, not today. No, not today. Okay, next week's going to be uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the verse they learned today, 1, and they're going to add verse 2. Hallelujah. How many enjoyed your Bible classes today? Sunday school? Hallelujah. Just before uh, we let the internet uh, crowd be dismissed, uh, the Lord spoke to me today about reading our offering scripture on the internet. 
all of those that you are at home. We, we go on with the service uh, briefly after the, the, the internet is turned off. And, uh, and so, but the Lord spoke to me about our, our reading today out of the book of Malachi. And uh, I wanted, I wanted, uh, I felt led that, that the Lord was showing me that I needed to read this to them as well. If you have your Bibles, just before we take our offering, would you read with me in the book of Malachi, the third chapter? The third chapter and the tenth verse, Malachi 3 and 10, it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. I wanted to share that with you today because it is so powerful that God would rebuke the devourer for our sake because we've been obedient to his word hallelujah i don't know about you but that's really big to me i need god to rebuke the devourer that wants to destroy my goods hallelujah all right every head bowed lord we ask you to bless the offering today lord we ask you to meet every need in every life and Lord, I ask you to move financially in the homes of these, these givers that are being obedient to your word. Lord, rebuke the devourer for their sake. Meet every need. Lord, cause the thief to be blind to their goods. And Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they cannot contain. Lord, as I heard one man of God pray, Lord, those things that have been held back, release it to them financially. Lord, those things that they don't even know about, cause those things to come in and be a blessing to them because they've been obedient to your word. And Lord, we'll give you the glory, the praise, the honor in the precious name of Jesus. And let everybody say amen. Brother Keith and Brother Mark, if you would, would you come on now? Hallelujah. If you need a time for